<laughs> What's good, bitches? My mic sucks. Sorry. Like, look at that shit. Look at that. It's like completely detached and broken. Hi. Hold on a second. But at least it still works. What the fuck is good, bitches? I'm the almighty fucking mass creature. Pony Mickey. So. Alright, what's on the agenda for today in my uh, oh so educated college buddy? I'm not in college, but he is, so therefore, yeah. he's my college buddy. You may not uh you may not guess this by the fact that I have long hair and I'm wearing a hat and I'm also have a behemoth shirt. But uh I go to college and I consider myself a pretty intelligent guy. I mean I'm no Albert Einstein or uh, Frederick Nietzsche or uh, Thomas the Tank Engine, <laughs> but, uh, oh, Thomas. uh, yeah, no, I go to Christopher Newport University, I'm a senior, hopefully next spring I'll be graduating with a degree, undergraduate degree in history with a minor in philosophy, and I want to go to grad school to study archaeology. Anyways, today, we're going to talk about capitalism and socialism, and which one's better. Um, as I said, I go to college, I know a little bit about the two, I don't claim to be an expert, or a sexpert, if you prefer. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, capitalism and socialism. What do you guys think? Well, let's see. First, we must define these terms before we can accurately assess them. Capitalism. What is capitalism, my college buddy? I can't. Not in college. Um, <laughs> capitalism is basically the the government does not regulate property or the economy theoretically. Um, that, well, that would be total free market capitalism. Where the government is totally hands off or laissez faire. And uh, basically, everyone has the potential to accumulate wealth based on how hard they work or how smart they work. Um, socialism is a little bit different, theoretically. I mean, there's varying degrees. I mean, there's very totalitarian communism where the government controls everything yeah. and it controls exactly how much people get paid. But I would say, so here's where I was gonna, here's where I was gonna go with this. People tend to diss socialism, but I don't see why. I think socialism, a mild amount of socialism. I guess just like conservative socialism or maybe liberal socialism is not that bad. The reason being, I feel like capitalism has a very bad tendency to allow for people basically to get fucked or to at least to have a very large gap between uh, rich and poor. Um, and if you live in America, you'll know there's a pretty big gap between rich and poor, even though the poor in America are not that bad. Compared. Well, I don't want to go on that, but. Sorry. Bobby's Bobby's yeah, sorry, Bobby's like, yeah, my house is pretty hectic, so if you hear shit in the background, don't mind it. It's just, like, people oh, getting cool. raped in the eye. <laughs> it's full of fucking trivium. Hell yeah. <laughs> Where is it? Oh, yeah. Well, anyways, here's my thoughts on socialism. I think socialism is not bad, because socialism basically still allows for people to achieve based on merit or based on how hard they work or how smart they work, but it also sort of gives a little bit of a safety net so that people don't get totally fucked over and abused by, you know, the rich or by the, those, you know, with the control. Yeah. I'm familiar with the term uh, distribution of the wealth, right? So uh, that that's like, uh, what is it? <laughs> um, I mean, wealth distribution is like... The distribution of Some the people I mean, refer to it as people like uh, stealing from like like the higher ups. Like they're stealing um, their money. Well, yeah, that would be. Um, I mean, that's sort of being referred to with stuff like the, you know, the rich having to pay a higher percentage of taxes than the poor. Which I don't care if you have a hard on for Ray, Ronald Reagan. Uh, <laughs> the tax cuts for the rich and Reaganomics they just don't fucking work. All right. Go cry about it all you want. Yeah, it's work. basically just higher taxing for them and so uh, the government just has giving some of it to the lower class, right? Yeah, and it's not like know, it's not like the rich, the, the poor. I mean, sorry, it's not like the rich being totally robbed. They're still really rich. So yeah, it's like they have more than enough fair. money to provide for themselves. They have more than enough money to like get like iPhones and all that shit. But you know, when you have like people in the ghettos. You know, who are like, you know, struggling, like, to just make ends meet. You know, they're on food stamps and shit. You know, it really, like, doesn't matter. It's like, just, just fucking help them out, you know? Yes. Like, they can't afford their gold hummers. <laughs> oh, where, <wah>, where? <laughs> but see, like, any form of taxing, you know, it's like, that's not stealing, you know? Like, look at any country with no form of taxation, and it's gonna, like, fucking crumble, you know? So, uh, if you're just gonna, like, tax them just a little bit more. You know, it really isn't like stealing, because if yeah. you refer to it as stealing, refer to all taxation as stealing. It's just, uh, hello. <laughs> well, the problem the problem with capitalism is that it can allow for human rights abuses, basically, because it makes it makes denying people 
you know, a good living. It makes that economical. I mean, basically, the reason we have a minimum wage, I mean, well, over this way, if, if, if the government hadn't set a minimum wage, then you'd probably have people getting paid a lot less per hour just because the companies can do that because it's more economical. The companies make more money that way. And it's a capitalist system. It's free. It's free. I mean, it's more, you know, free will and stuff if you prefer, but... I don't really know how to wrap this up, but I mean, yeah, like when it comes to socialism and distribution of the wealth, see, like, if you happen to, like, take somebody from the rich and, you know, give it to the poor, however you want to put it, it's not fucking the rich in the ass, and it's not giving the lower class, like, a free ride, because in the end, he's still going to have to struggle to, to earn everything that, you know, he has, he, like, all the, all people are going to have to, like, do whatever they need to do, like, even if they need to work two jobs and, like, walk, you know, an hour and a half to work, you know, just to, like, you know, save money, you know, to not have to, like, buy a car and, like, put down money on car payments and stuff, you know, taking whatever measures necessary, but it just helps, you know, because there are people starving, and there's more than enough food to distribute throughout the world, and when there's more than enough food to distribute throughout the world, and when you still have people starving, it really just makes, like, no freaking, like, excuse as to why, like, you have to do that. So you always gotta like look out for people. But anyone who thinks like it's stealing or like it's like raping like the fucking like upper class in the ass or giving the lower no, class it, free ride. It isn't because it's not. it because in a in a in a I guess a liberal socialist system, the rich still or people still have the potential to get rich, you know, if they work hard. And people still have the potential to not really go anywhere in life if they don't work hard. It's just people that, you know, it just there's a, a little bit of a safety net for people, you know, it prevents people from getting totally fucked over if something bad happens. And, you know, I mean, for those, by the way, yeah, this is where I was going to go. For those of you who want to argue that, oh, I'm living within my means, you know, I hate to immediately, so blatantly reiterate the amazing atheist point, but uh, basically you are, you are very, you know, you could easily get in deep, deep debt and be totally fucked just by a totally accidental medical emergency. I mean, you may be doing all right. But, I mean, something happens and you could be hundreds of thousands of dollars in debts. That's why a socialized medicine or a socialized healthcare system wouldn't, you know, that, that's why it wouldn't really be that bad despite what you hear. It, you know, basically mean that if something really bad happens to you that's not your fault, don't worry about it. You're not going to be in too much trouble. Yeah, like, I don't see how that's such a huge, like, devilish, you know, com communist. Fuck that. Yeah, like, when it comes to healthcare and stuff. You know, um, you know, I don't think like anyone has, you know, like it has like a deserving like need to die if like they just can't afford it. Like if someone can't afford to you know, get health care, I don't think like that person should you know just die just because he can't afford it. Should be like, oh, well, he can't afford his health care, so, so he should just die of it, you know his uh, you know injuries or die of his illnesses. You know, like I just think like whatever measure you take, people ought to just be more compassionate and you know, just try something like like universal, you know, as opposed to just well, you know, he can't afford to like you know get his like fucking you know. You know his surgery. You know, he he should just like get like his like influenza to just like kill him or whatever. He should have worked hard. Yeah, whatever. Like well, um, cut off an arm. Not it's anyone that influenza can kill you. Just like whatever could potentially kill you or just hurt you in general. There's like no excuse as to why you just like can't help people. Humanity's all about being more compassionate and understanding. You know, because that's essentially why you know we have society to begin with. We're not like wild men hunting prairie. You know, uh, or um, no. Uh, Wildebeest on the prairie. I thought like prairie was animal for a second. But well, you know, we're not wild men, you know, like hunting for our food. You know, we're all just living in like this civilized society and we uh, act under our own rights. You know, we don't act under natural rights because, like, natural right, I have like the right to kill you without any rational reason, but we don't do that. We like invent our, our own laws to like to, to prohibit our, you know, natural rights to like kill people just for the sake of the greater good for individual freedom. You know, like, I can't, like, kill you because, you know, I, that would be horrible. And for the same reason, like, you can't kill me. I mean, you can, but you you would have some uh, some legal repercussions for it. Let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story. This, I think, is the true face of capitalism in my opinion. All right, so in the late 1800s, after the, uh, you know, Industrial Revolution, you know, when basically people started building up all these factories and all the, you know, heavy industry and mass production and stuff, um, basically, you ended up having companies that were hiring children as early as old as like five or six to work and these 
in these factories, and you had children working like 50 and 60 hours a week in really dangerous conditions and not being educated because they didn't have time because they were working 60 hours a week. Um, the companies allowed for that because, you know, if we're in a capitalist system, that makes more money and that, you know, benefits the people in charge. Well, the government, or, well, lobbyists and idealists basically ended up convincing the government to put regulations so that, you know, children couldn't work more than like 30 or 40 hours and that these children had to be educated. Oh, God forbid we educate the children. God forbid we train the free thinkers, right? And, you know, you know, yeah, yes, the companies made slightly less money, but, you know, did that force the companies to go out of business because their children, because the children couldn't work 60 hours a week? No, it just meant the people who were making like $100 million a year now started making $70 million a year. Oh, boo, 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 boo. At, you know, it's such a small price to pay such a small price to pay for, you know, basic human rights and stuff. Yeah, this guy's obviously like a lot more uh, opinionated when it comes to politics than me. <laughs> I know relatively nothing about politics lately. <laughs> it's all good, but uh, let's see, what else can we fucking talk about? If there is a god, how come there would be so much suffering? <laughs> That's a good topic. That's a good topic. It's a test! It's trying to test you in some way, shape, or form. Why is there a disease? It's a test. Why is there homosexuality? It's a test. To see if you'll be tempted into, I'm tested right into now. eating the dick. <laughs> you know, you, you can like say that all you want. You tested me hard, Bobby. You're testing me <laughs> real hard. I think I'm getting a clue. The answer is I'm getting a clue right now. <laughs> You know, prove to me that your deity exists before you even say that, like, it's just, like, a test from him, you know, to, like, to see if, like, we're, like, morally capable of doing the things that he wants. You know, that's really stupid to, like, like think, like, he wants something from you, like, as a purpose for living. I prefer to believe, like, all point of life is subjective. I don't want to believe that I have an objective purpose, because that essentially means that your consciousness was just picked out of a lab tube and, and just put into this this oh, vessel man, of existence for someone else's yeah, own amusement or someone else's own game. Free will. And I want to, like, formulate my own purpose and my, and my own meaning in life as opposed to just being some drone, you know, like, that's just dictated by some other, like, unconceivable entity. But, um, you know, when it comes to like, things like morality, it's like, oh, well, you know what, like, if you didn't have your daddy, you would automatically, you know, be inclined to, like, strangle a puppy in front of an orphan. No, I, I think that's evil, but I, I'm going to do it just because yeah. I, like, want to, you know, not because, you know, your, your daddy wants it, you know, and I refer to, you know, like, deities as, like, your deities and not just God, you know, G-O-D, because everyone has their own interpretation of uh, G-O-D and not just a God or a deity. And so when it comes to the term, um, you know, God, I would say that I'm agnostic with an I because you need to give me a coherent definition of your own interpretation of God before I can engage in an argument with that term. You know, because what if I said something like this? Hey, are you a believer in Zagawaga? And you'd be like, well, what the fuck is Zagawaga? I don't even know what that is. So I'm not a Zagawaga. Zagawaga died for your sins. <laughs> I'm not a Zygowagist, I am in a Zygowagist, but I'm also an agnostic a Zygowagist because I have no idea what the frick you're talking about, and I don't believe in it because I have no idea what you're talking about, but before I could even, like, argue about its existence at all, you need to, like, give me, like, an, uh, like a coherent definition of what that really means. Like, otherwise, it's like, Zygowaga, you know, that, that's all essentially what God is, is, like, it's just a Zygowaga. You know, because you can say that, you know, it is a deity, in which case I would argue with you about that. You could say that it's everything, you know, and I would argue with you about that. Then you could say, like, it's a spirit that lives in us all, or it's all of our consciousnesses. Conscious. I don't know what the plural is, but or it's all of us binding together, or it lives in the earth, or it lives in the sky, or it lives in your coffee cup. Whatever you say... It's going to be, um, you know, contrary to someone else's um, own interpretation. So when it comes to the concept of capital G God, I am an agnostic atheist, I, I would say. But um, you know, but in, in which case, um, it, it would be, um, you know, referred to as a, a God. But um, I would just say, like, I'm agnostic in general. But when it com comes to the concept of deities in general, I would say I am an agnostic with an A, atheist. Let's talk about separate. Okay. So, <laughs> so no, it's cool. Suffering. <laughs> Let's talk about suffering. Okay. 
if you're a Christian, or I guess probably any of the Abrahamic religions, I guess if you're Christian, Jewish, even Muslim, probably, you believe that there's a God, you believe that he is all-powerful, and that he also, you know, loves people, but he's also just. So you believe that, you know, maybe some suffering and hardship occurs in, occurs in life because he's either testing you, testing your faith, or that maybe he's just punishing you for being a little unfaithful. Okay, we'll roll with that. Okay, so maybe maybe you lost your job, maybe you broke your arm or something. Fine. That's not inconsistent. <laughs> think about this. I saw a picture in, I believe it was, I think it was National Geographic. This came out about two years ago, right after the huge earthquake in Haiti. There was this boy, he couldn't have been older than like 10 or 11. He was dragging corpses into the street because there were so many dead people and so much destruction that there was no place to put all these bodies just to store them. And, here's the catch. He was stacking these corpses in the street, and they were his family. This little boy had lost his entire family to this earthquake. And on top of that, Haiti is a Christian country. Most of the people in Haiti were Christian at the time. I don't care what Pat Robertson says about some bullshit deal with the devil. The vast majority of the Haitian people are Christian, and they worship God, and believe in Jesus. So, that is completely inconsistent. Just think about that. Little boy dragging his family's corpses in the middle of the street. Why? Where is God? Obviously, is he God forgot there? to go to church one time. Obviously, yeah, that means. <laughs> Oops, you masturbated one time. <laughs> Killed your dad. <laughs> Killed your mom. You know, that sounds like a pretty so just God, girl. right? Boom! What's your dog? <laughs> Honestly, I don't believe that God is cruel. I just believe that God is weak. I think that's a better explanation. Well, actually, I actually really don't believe in God at all, but I think God is just completely impotent. Why well, can't... If, if God really even it. gave, like, half of your shit, I think he could easily prevent half... I mean, it's just like... There, there are small hardships and su small suffering that could still be consistent with God. But there is also so much suffering in the world. So very much just fucked up shit that just happens, you know, not only to, only to the naughty people, but also to the believers as well. It's just completely inconsistent. Where's God? Is he cruel? Is he malevolent? Yeah, is like he incompetent? Or is he just impotent and weak. Yeah, I don't know who said that, um, but, um, like, there's this, there's this quote, uh, I'm, I'm gonna be, like, paraphrasing here, but, um, yeah, yeah, like, curse me for not, like, remembering who said this, but, like, he said, if God is omnipotent yet able, then he's evil. If he's omnipotent and not able, then he is incompetent. If he is not omnipotent and able, then or if he's omnipotent and able, then why call him God in the first place? <laughs> it seems like any like interpretation of him is just like completely inconsistent me, and contradictory. Me, yeah, that's actually that's a really good way. Of, um, I'm gonna try and explain it a little better. Not that you are to your I'm just like, um, I I I'm a, I have a minor in philosophy. I so love golden know. showers. <laughs> me too. Buddy, yeah. Me too. Uh, basically, Epicurus, this, this is a very famous uh, example. It's called Whence Cometh Evil. Yeah, that, that's what that's what I was getting He's at. He's basically they were saying, where does evil and suffering come from? If God, taking the two claims, if God is all-powerful and all-loving. Okay, if God is all-powerful and all-loving, where does evil come from? All right, let's, let's take another possibility. If God is all-powerful but not all-loving, he is malevolent. He's evil. Why would you worship him? If God is all-loving but not all-powerful, then he's not really God. If God is neither all powerful and all not, nor nor all loving, what is He then? There's no logical explanation for the amount of suffering in the world. Yeah, it's it's completely inconsistent with the idea of an all powerful and all loving God. So it was the philosopher Epicurus. He was about I think it was about 200 A.D. I believe he was Roman. You can correct me if I'm wrong. He was a cool guy. He had some good stuff to say. Yeah, that's essentially what I was getting at. Like, I didn't remember the exact quote or, or like, what, uh, or who said it or, like, how it was said, but, no. yeah, that's what I was getting at. It just seems like, you know, like, whence cometh evil? Like, why is there evil? Oh, God, it's Satan. It's Satan. <laughs> but, yeah, whatever you say, prove why that he exists. Why couldn't God keep more, why couldn't God keep Satan under control better? If, 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 <laughs> why didn't he God snap his Satan? fingers and the guy's gone? Yeah, why did he get to create Satan in the first place? Yeah, it's like, with well, the power of logic, anything can be debunked and refuted. You just have to kind of put it into perspective. And, and like, you know, when it comes to the concept of a deity's existence, you know, I was mentioning this in my other video, like, why shouldn't I be an atheist? Well, like, like when it comes to the concept of the existence of a deity, it seems just incoherent, because if he, if he exists outside of time, 
then that's incoherent because that's like saying your deity can exist for zero seconds and that's equivalent to being a thought of as not being able to exist at all but if he exists within the realm of time and he created time it's like then you know that's like saying like i created my house and then i gave birth to myself inside of my house after i built it so i have no idea like what the freak you're talking about where he's like, well he's divine you know he can like act outside of the laws of physics and science you just don't understand i know <laughs> Yeah, it's like, that's just kind of an excuse. It's kind of a convenience. It's like, wh whatever, like, whatever you can't explain, whatever you can't, like, back up through the laws of, like, logic and reason and rationality, it just, it's just magic. It's just divine. You know, like, excuse me for being a non-believer, but, you know, and I, I'm an agnostic non-believer. Like, show me some, like, evidence. Show me some scientific data. You know, like, you know there's no scientific data because it's just larger than that. Well, you know what? The flying spaghetti monster is larger than your scientific data, you know, so prove to me that he doesn't exist. Fuck! But it's like, well, you know what? You know, there are like billions of people who believe in my God, so that that just means like it's more, you know, more valid. But, you know, that's the logical fallacy known as arguments of my populum, you know, appeal to the majority or appeal to population. So, <laughs> or appeal to popularity, rather. So it's like, well, what if like, Three billion people believed in the flying spaghetti monster. You still believe that? That's freaking crazy, right? Yeah, it would. So it doesn't really matter how many people believe in it or how long like the belief has been passed down through generation to generation and how many like editions of your holy texts have been permeated throughout the world. It doesn't fucking matter. A lot of a lot of people believed that Hitler was doing good things at the time. Does that make him okay? Yeah. <laughs> You know, um, you know, there are lots of quotes like that, like Hitler said, you know, that he was using religion to justify, you know, his, uh, you know, beliefs of genocide. It can, like, really, like, screw you over, you know, um, you know, and when it comes to, like, that, you know, when it comes to, the like, the heart of your, uh, your religion, you know, like, religions like Islam, where you, or you're given, like, the mandate to kill, you know. No, that's so not, well, I mean, <laughs> that's not really necessarily true, although, although, if you do read the Quran, the Quran does say pretty explicitly that women are inferior and natural evil, and so are the Jews. That's what it says in the Quran. So, like the Islam, penalty for apostasy yeah. is death. Yeah. <laughs> so I've kind of changed my stance. I used to think Islam was like a really violent religion. It's not necessarily the word, wording in the Quran is that kind of ambiguous on that, but it is a pretty, uh, I would say, just misogynist and just intolerant religion. At least by at least by its uh its doctrine, not necessarily its practice. You should all read the Quran. Yeah, this doesn't seem like it's, it's, it's really repugnant and reprehensible to just like kill someone just because they abandon your faith. It's like, well, you, know, you disbelieve in the flying spaghetti monster. Now we're gonna freaking boil you in a lake of spaghetti sauce because it's okay. It says so. And, and uh, you know, people like you know, like to say like, well, you're just because you know there there are extremists and there are radicals out there doesn't mean that you know there are that everyone's like that. But it doesn't really matter if like if it, if it, that just means that those people aren't exhibiting you know the the attributes of the core of the religion. Like if the religion that the flying spaghetti monster said, okay, if you have the mandate to kill people who don't like spaghetti. But if you just chose not to, even if you like knew someone who just didn't like spaghetti, you know, you're just refusing to not Death to the non spaghetti fans. <laughs> you're just refusing to not act on your own beliefs. It doesn't mean that your beliefs don't stipulate that you have that mandate. You're just refusing to do it. And some people just refuse to like have the mandate to kill. Now there's this guy like um I forgot his name, like Theo Van something. It was in uh, one of Thunderfoot's videos. And um like he was just this guy who was like cycling back from work or whatever and he got decapitated just because he like insulted um you know islam and uh the makers of south park were threatened you know by the you know, the muslims because uh, they depicted muhammad like in a bear costume and they said oh you're gonna end up like that theo guy and it's just like just because like he was you know your deity was depicted in a show that was contrary to your own beliefs I mean, who the frick cares? Like, yeah. radical Muslims are just way too, way too fucking sensitive sometimes. They need to just like grow up and realize that every everyone with a religion gets made fun of from time to time. Everyone, every every religious figure is subject to criticism and is subject to getting made fun of, or even just depicted funny. It's not like we're saying we're a terrible person for believing that. It's just good fun, basically. So, I mean, it's like regardless of whether or not you do it, if it's said in your your holy text or, or whatever holy text you follow, 
that you had the mandate to do that, you have the justification to do that, and it's okay, and like you're ordered to do that, then that's fucking vile and repugnant as shit. Like I saw this um like this interview with this other dude that that said that it was like that it was actually um you know indicted in um you know whatever like I don't know if it was like the Sharia or like the the, the Quran or whatever, but he said like they have the mandate to terrorize quote unquote non believers. And like and he, he was trying to like like compare it to nine eleven and say, Well, you know what, that's just our that's just our you know commandment or whatever. You know, we have like the, the justification and the mandate to terrorize them, but it doesn't mean like it has to be planes, you know, it just means to inflict fear into them. Well, I, either way, if you have words like terrorize in there, you're, you're gonna have people who, who just think that they have the mandate to smash their planes into buildings. Even why would why why would an all powerful and all all knowing God why would he be that petty as to say you should you should terrorize people that don't believe or why would he be that petty to hate women and hate Jews? That doesn't sound like a, you know, I don't believe in a God, but if I believe if I did think there was a God, I would think he would be a little a little more mature than that. I mean the the Islamic God kinda of, honestly it just seems like a really moody teenager sometimes. Yeah, and if there are any like Islamic believers out there, they're gonna be like, We're gonna kill you you know, that that already justifies everything I'm Do saying it. here. Kill us. <laughs> if you can find us, kill us. Like I, I would never follow a religion, you know, like if you know, if they said that I have the mandate to like kill people. I just don't like feel like that's just Is necessary. That it, that's like a no. like a freaking third world thing. It just has no place in the world of civilization and uh, world yeah. reason. It's the 21st century. And enlightenment, you, you know, it's just, we just don't have that kind of, like, place for, for that kind of, like, repugnant mm. shit. Yeah. Why don't we take a break? All right, yeah, that's cool. Um, or at least let Paul talk. <laughs> all right, yeah, you want to talk about something, Paul? We're talking about, you know, politics and religion and stuff. What's on your mind? Um, you can I hold the mic, too. All right. I personally feel that the idea of a god being all-loving is slightly... I don't know how to put it, but the idea that he's all-loving means that for the sake of having an even on both sides of the spectrum, either there's another entity or he is also all-hating. He will <laughs> hate us for what we do and love us. So why does he choose when to punish and when to give? What? At what hmm. point does he decide that he's going to be all-loving towards you or all-hating towards you? And does following him really put you on the complete opposite side of the spectrum, which would then make him like a teenager. He's going to choose who he hates or choose who he loves, which doesn't make him all-powerful or all-knowing. He just wants certain people to be on his favored side and someone to be on his hated. That's pretty bipolar. <laughs> and like, what, if you were a bipolar person, what if you were a person who was just like completely ignorant to the concept of any deity at all? You know, there's that like one joke, you know, with the Eskimo and the priest, and he says, "Hey, if I didn't know about heaven or hell, you know, would I ever like, you know, you know, go to hell?" You know, and the priest was like, "Well, no. You know, if you didn't know about it, you know, you'd still like automatically go to heaven." And he's like, "Well, why would you tell me?" <laughs> he's like, "Why would you tell me about it then?" You know, just like keep me ignorant about it, and I'll just like, there's no problem. You don't have to like, you know, like, it's just, it just automatically insinuates that it's just all a ploy to. Uh, instill conformity, you know, to to authority and you know to instill obedience to the people in charge. But in any case, we have like twenty eight minute long video. I think we made some good progress and some yeah. incoherent babbling. It's been fun. You know, again, I'm not like the most educated, you know, political or religious thinker out there, but you know, I still have my own beliefs. But if you've got some fucking arguments, regardless of how educated I am in my own arguments, I will gladly take your arguments Me and, too. and evaluate them. And him too. Yeah, and I'm him pointing, too. Yeah, I'm pointing McGee. If you have a problem with something I said and you want to take it up directly with me, uh, we'll put the link in the description. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. I'm going to up some stuff on. Yeah, comments, video responses, they're all acceptable. Like, if you think like you can pwn us in any way, shape, or form, we Bring invite it on. you. We invite you. The flipper. Bring it on. You give the guy the go. Give the guy the go. The go. <laughs> All right, so this is Souls. This is Pony McGee. So this is uh, our second collab. We're going to do another one maybe sometime in the future. Who knows? The fuck when? We're going to like conjure up some topics first. But either way, I am the almighty Dark Lord fucking massive creature. Much clown love to all the lows and lights. It's your guns, let your own path, and biohazard for fucking love. Bye. Ah, 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 ah. Oh! <gasps>